the Western Conference Finals. Let's talk about Lakers versus Nuggets, guys. It's a matchup between the two big men. It's Nikola Jokic versus Anthony Davis. This is a matchup that we saw in the bubble season, but the both but both the teams are very very different now. Both the teams of Nikola Jokic is very different now. LeBron is very different now. We do not have as many big men on the Lakers team as we used to have at that point of time. And Nikola Jokic, when we were talking about the bubble season, he was not. Uh, he was not. He was a two-time All-Time NBA team, but now he is a two-time All-Star, and he almost won the third time as well, coming in second this time. What do you think, guys? Think about this exciting matchup moving forward. For sure, one of the most exciting games that I've been eagerly waiting for. I mean, you know how many Lee Mickey and A Disney memes I've seen so far, and <laughs> now you see that both the Eastern and Western Conference bubble matchups are back. And I mean, for sure, like you said, right? Jokic was one of the best. Uh, he was a good player, and he was one of the All Stars that season too. I mean, he was considered one of the best bigs ba- back then. But now, I mean, especially after another performance that we saw last night. I mean, he's probably the best center right now in the game after the kind of playoff series that he had with the Phoenix Suns. And as we talked about this, even with the Lakers, right? Lakers had Dwight Howard, who I mean, I remember seeing him grab eleven rebounds a match against the Nuggets and getting a couple of minutes here and there. Javin McGee running around, you know, all those players they had a lot of size and on that team. And this Lakers team, especially in that Warriors series, we saw them. Play a lot of guards who are really small, small on the smaller side. You had Dennis Schroeder playing a lot of time. You have, you obviously have Austin Reeves and D'Lo who are not the biggest and most uh, intimidating wings on the series. But at the same point of time, I mean, these are players who are giving the Lakers a lot. And I mean, the biggest matchup I, I mean, throughout this series is going to be the playoff MVP Jokic, who has been incredible. I mean. I just want to read you off his stats. In the last uh, six games, right, in the last playoff series against the Suns, Jokic averaged 35 points, 13 rebounds, and 10 assists on 59, 44, and 85 from the field. And that was the kind of performance you got from a two-time MVP. And at the same point in time, I mean, AD had a beautiful series as well. But, I mean, statistically, nowhere near what Jokic was putting. And you could obviously see the gap between uh, having you know a uh, two two man roster in the Suns was the Nuggets team, which is I mean throughout it's not star studded at all, but throughout the team you have players who are doing their jobs perfectly. You had Aaron Gordon who was you know defending KD throughout the game for multiple possessions, and he got a, a KD on a few. I mean KCP Devin Booker was on another level for two of those games, but at the same point time they did a good job at keeping him on base a lot of times. You had Jamal Murray giving them a lot of buckets. You had MPJ who did not get off to a heated start in uh, any game except for game 5, I think. But at the same point, you didn't need an MPJ performance. Right? You had Yoke. When Yoke is giving you 50-point games, I mean, there's nothing else that the Nuggets need. They just need the role players to get some shots. They just need Jamal Murray to not be as tricky as, you know, probably in the bubble, uh, that bubble Murray season. When... I mean, one series, he was 60% from the three-point line. The other season, other playoff series against the Lakers, I just saw this. He was actually 30%, which I do not remember him missing as many shots. I remember him always being a threat from beyond the arc. But at the same point in time, I mean, this Nuggets team has a lot. And it's shown me a lot, especially as a Lakers fan, to think that, you know, they are the favorites to go forward from the West. Uh, I I tend to agree with this, uh, what both of you have said. Um, like I said previously, uh, the Denver Nuggets look like the most whole team to me. They are they are the most uh, deep team to me. Also, just a quick recap: uh, GG's Warrior fans, we got knocked out, uh, but we'll be back. But coming back to this matchup. Uh, like I said, I predicted the Lakers to win because they felt like a more whole team. They felt like they had chemistry and all the players knew the role and they were playing that role. And I feel like Denver is a team which is quite similar, but I think they are even a level higher in that term because they've done that for a whole year rather than like just at the trade deadline. So the Lakers, while they're playing very good and they have chemistry and all the role players fit finally, I feel like they have less games under the belt. They have less experience playing together. 
uh, as compared to the Nuggets who have had a full season of playing together and, and their role players fit incredibly well too. KCP is playing really well. Chris, uh, Christian Braun is playing really well. Uh, the other Brown is playing really well. More uh, Brown. Bruce, uh, Brown. Bruce Brown is playing really well. And then obviously Jamal Murray is looking like he's back in that form. Jokic has been Jokic. I mean, like you guys pointed out, these two teams are very, very different than they were before. Uh, one key matchup I'd like to say that I think for the Lakers to win, AD will definitely have to win his matchup since Jokic is not one of the best defensive centers like I like I pointed out before. He can hold his own at times, but I mean, AD has to crush that matchup, especially in the defensive form that he's been in. I feel like he should kill that matchup like on either end for the Lakers to have any sort of chance in winning this because I don't think uh, LeBron can carry them any farther in in this in this round at least in this series i don't think uh lebron is as key as as anthony davis winning What's his it? matchups but overall like team matchups i think lakers are not too far behind in terms of the guards as well i think they match up really well to the nuggets but i think overall depth like with the experience that they have playing together i, I would give the edge to the to the nuggets as well I mean, I just wanted to throw some stacks over here. I mean, uh, there's some numbers that we need to know. The Nuggets have scored 118.7 points per 100 possessions through the first two rounds of the playoffs, while Lakers have just allowed 106.5 per 100 possessions. So it's basically the number one offensive team versus the number one defensive team. I mean, the Lakers, uh, Denver has taken 53 percent of his shots, the highest rate in the playoffs in the paint shooting 57.2, sixth best over there. And the Lakers, we might have allowed their opponents to shoot that's just 50.9, second lowest in the paint. The mark was just 47.9%, by the way, with Anthony Davis on the floor. So it is a exciting matchup. I don't think, I mean, I, I believe that, yes, Denver has a, a deeper team. But I think so, the, the bench production from the Lakers has been absolutely brilliant. And they have the and they and they have the confidence uh, moving in. I mean, uh, but what we need to also understand is that we'll have to see that how Rui Hachimura probably comes off the bench and scores. But um, and Dennis Schroeder would probably be the X factor in this particular series as well. And we what we need to see is that what lineup does uh, the Lakers start with? I mean, obviously, it would be LeBron really on the floor. But is Schroeder also starting the game, or is he coming late into the bench? Is is Vanderbilt also coming out to the? Uh, is starting or is Schroeder taking his place? I mean, I, we know that Rui Hachimura would probably obviously coming off the bench, but we will have to see that what is uh, what is the Lakers going to start with? Is it back to bend or the Schroeder coming uh, on? What do you think? I'm, I'm particularly like you said, right? I mean, I remember having a lot of talks with uh, Rajnash about Schroeder, you know. By the way, Rajnash <laughs> really hates Schroeder. And I mean, he's Big like one of the the best. He's that kind of a player, obviously, that you do not want to see on the other team because he's flailing a lot. I mean, as a Laker fan, I have to say that whenever I see him guarding someone or whenever he's trying to drive, always bringing his hands up and he's going for that foul nine out of ten times. But, you know, so, uh, you, you know that is uh, more than the points. I think it's the energy that Schroeder brings. I think we saw in the last two games, he was playing like almost 30 minutes a game. And it was part to Darwin Ham's scheme where, you know, Jared Vanderbilt probably started the game, but he played no more than 12 minutes. And that's the thing, right? So the Warriors really made made uh, Jared Vanderbilt seem like an offensive liability. They did not respect him at all. And after a while, he himself lost uh, his, you know, trust in his shooter. And that's what I think the Nuggets are going to probably capitalize on, that if you do not have to guard one, there's one less person on the perimeter. That means there's just one more person in the paint that's probably deterring AD to a jump shot or to LeBron to take uh, a light wise three, right? And that's something that we've seen through uh, throughout this playoff series. Now, I saw that graphic. I mean, this is a meme at this point that Srijan's favorite player is Rui Hachimura from the Lakers team. But mm-hmm. I mean, that graphic still exists, right? Where Rui had more points than most benches on uh, or, or on either of the uh, uh, playoff teams, right? And Rui had like 110 points to all average benches having like 100 points throughout the playoff series. Throughout each playoff series, sorry. And that's one thing that I've seen in 
every one of these last four events against the Warriors, right? You had the game one where Delo came up, you had that that fourth quarter with Lonnie Walker, you had Austin Reeves really jump in. You Lakers really need that third person to jump in. I think it's no longer a two-man game. Obviously, in 2020, I mean, LeBron James was carrying, he had like 38 points in that game, 5 and 80 hit that crazy dagger 3 in game. Oh, that was that just was, unfortunate. That was probably my favorite moment from that season, right? But I, I mean, I do not, I do not trust those things to happen again. And I, I, and that is the biggest problem, I think, with the Lakers right now, that they're relying too heavily on these players who are very streaky. Lonnie Walker, good player, but very streaky. I mean, he can go 6 for 9 in that game 4, but he can also go 3 for 11 in game 5. Or Rui Hachimura, who can take 11 shots and make 8 of them out, he takes 3 shots and makes 2, two of them. And that is something that we're going to have to see from the series throughout. That is there a third person from the Lakers that's coming through? Or, or unless you have just a monster AD game, he's getting 40 and 20 and he's completely dominating. Because I think there's one thing that Jokic has, you know, really deterred from that last playoff series and that's that he is a defensive liability. I think throughout that mid-range pull-ups and all those threes that the Suns were taking, I think they were not able to capitalize on Jokic. And not to not to the the fact that their role players did not jump in. I think Jokic did a better job defensively than what you've seen. And I think Ralph would tend to agree, right? Um yes and no. I feel like the Suns didn't have the personnel to match up against uh Jokic or to exploit him too much because their jump shot shooters, I mean, arguably they should have done really well because Jokic usually plays drop, but they had him show high, which kind of messed with the Suns. But honestly, Suns were kind of shooting themselves in the foot because they sort of had that offense that the Nets had back back when they were uh, going up against the Bucks, the right? Bucks. Where the uh, yeah, where they made them pay for having that offense, wherein it's not really an offense; it's just ISO players going ISO, which usually what they do it's it's either the isos or it's it's those pick and rolls wherein they try and shoot tough contested shots and to their credit they were doing that for a while and then it just failed them at, at the end there especially durant like because booker was still carrying on like he he died at that sword and in, in the last game but like other than that he played exceptional throughout this whole run but to your point i feel like Jared Vanderbilt will get even lesser minutes in this series, especially because I feel like they do not have a use for him in this series because they don't really need uh, someone to stop a guard or some somebody in this team because I don't feel like uh, Murray has that many moves. Like, seeing him in the previous series, I feel like he doesn't have all these dribble penetration moves. He just is a, a decent shooter and he navigates the pick and roll Nicely. If if you contain that, which I think the Lakers can do without Jared Vanderbilt on the floor, I think they'll they'll go in with an extra offensive option. And to your point about relying on some of those guys, I feel like that's what a championship team has usually. It's it's those random guys just having those nights and carrying them to a win, like like Lonnie Walker in that game where he saved a game. And at the end of the day, in a series, you just need four wins. If one guy gets you one win and you have like four different guys rotating every other game or so, I feel like that works in your favor rather than against you. And like you said, I almost all of these guys are very inconsistent except for Austin Reeves who has been fairly consistent. I feel like they are those kind of players. It's not just that they are being inconsistent right now. It's just the nature of these guys. They're very rhythm players. Like, D'Lo is a very rhythm player. One game, he'll give you, like, very efficient 30. And another game, he's just, what, like, 3 for 30 or something like that. So, you, you just kind of have to live with those. But I feel like that's what gives a vibe of a championship wherein you're just having random guys who, who've been riding the bench for so long, but they're so ready. Like Lonnie Walker just came on and just took the game, which sways the momentum of a series, like like it did in the previous one, right? And like I said, uh, the defensive rating, the offensive rating, it will have to move for me to AD's matchup again. I I feel like AD is the paint, AD is the defense. I think how he plays determines a lot of how Lakers uh, look like. 
And other than that, obviously, these guys, Dilo, Rui, Rees, Schroeder, Lonnie, like you guys pointed out, it's it's a team sport, obviously, and they need to show up as well. Obviously, LeBron is LeBron. We, we expect him to show up. It, that's why he's not even being discussed. Uh, AD is probably one of the bigger question marks sometimes. That, uh, you know, he can be on and off, and he's very unpredictable. And other than that, you're kind of just hoping he doesn't get injured in the in the next two series because you, you, you're always holding your breath with that guy. But other than that, I feel like it's just AD is the biggest matchup to me. Uh, Denver looks really strong in terms of depth. They have better chemistry according to me. And I think if uh, AD gets dominated by Jokic, which I, I think he might because he's in that form... Uh, that that will just sway series for me because I I think I'm not expecting Jamal Murray to show up uh, oh. because of who he has been. I think he's been very inconsistent, but I feel like the rest of the guys on the Nuggets are very consistent. Like both the Browns, KCP, it's just been it's it's been awesome. Uh, like like you guys pointed out, Rui had uh, really high bench numbers, right? I feel like all the series that they've had uh, till now, the Nuggets. Their bench has crushed the opposition bench. It's not even close. In the Sun series, they were almost crushing the Sun starters with just their bench, and it was it, it was awesome to see. Like I think, I think they have to be the favorites to win it all this year. I think this is their year. If they don't win this year, I think it's gonna be tough bringing back the same same team again. For sure, and to the to your credit, right? I remember this twenty twenty quote by uh, Frank Vogel right before they won. Right, it was Doris Burke who was asking him. Then, right, you obviously have LeBron and you obviously have AD, right? And uh, who's going to be the third person who steps up? And it's like you don't you don't need a third player, right? It's LeBron and AD have the kind of gravity that they have already two three players on them, and it's always that open guy who can be that third star and. In that series, I remember KCP hitting a lot of threes. I remember Kuzma sometimes being streaky. And obviously, Jamal Murray, I think Jamal Murray is the definition of being streaky. Because game one, I thought bubble Jamal is back. And then exactly. game two, yeah. Exactly. And then, and then he game... didn't show up the rest of the series. Exactly. It was like, until like the last game where he was like crazy again. Yeah. So, it's just... So, J- Jamal Murray is probably the most streaky shooter ever because he's going to take tough shots after one. He's going to take that step back. He has a crazy crossover, which, I mean, it doesn't get a lot of separation, but it's like, bam, bam. It's not explosive, but he tries to be really explosive. I mean, Jamal Murray is the definition of streaky for sure. But that's something that the Lakers have, right? And to your point again, Rudraj, I mean, 2022 Warriors, when I think about that team, you had Gary Payton stepping up. You had Otto Porter stepping up. I mean, Andrew Wiggins himself, like, came out and became the second best player throughout that series. I mean, especially during the finals. He was the plug-and-play guy. You could play him at power forward. You could play him at three. You could play him at two. You can play him anywhere on the court and he would be productive. And I think that's something that, you know, this Laker team has in the sense that they have a lot of players who can really step up for the moment. I mean, Rui Hachimura, we've talked about this in our podcast throughout that, you know, this guy could just go in and just give you seven, eight points in a quarter, easy, easy bucket after bucket. And that's just something that the Lakers really need sometimes. You just need a Lonnie Walker going crazy and you just need someone to just go in and get, give you a bucket. So, uh, sometimes out of nowhere, give you an isolation play and give you a bucket. And I think the major thing about the Lakers is going to be that how do you take uh, how do you take advantage of the non Jokic minutes, right? Because for sure they're going to be like the Suns weren't able to take anything apart uh, out from the non Jokic minutes. I mean they were a minus for like two to three games, and that's what really killed them. And I think if they're able to, if AD is able to, and if uh, the Lakers bench is able to give them something, especially when Jokic is out, probably they win the series. Well, why not? But let's quickly move on to the series predictions, guys. Uh, you know the new format of the series predictions, how we do it. The first is the best player of the game. The second is the biggest bust of the game. The third is the most surprising player of the game. And the last would be, who do you think that will win the game one in this particular uh, matchup? Rudraj, what do you think? 
Oh, biggest player of the game? I think Jokic dominates the game one. Uh, considering the conditions that the Lakers will be going into, Denver has a real, I think, the only team with a real home court advantage, considering that they have different altitude and like different conditions that the players are not conditioned to. Uh, I think Jokic has a monster game. Uh, biggest bust? Uh, I don't know, maybe AD? Because if he has a monster game, probably AD has to have a bust of a game. Uh, most surprising player, Christian Braun, I think will surprise some of the Laker fans if they haven't seen him already. Uh, and with that, I think Denver will win this game. And 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 additionally, I'd like to add, if if the Lakers lose this game, I think their chances to win this series dip extremely oh, yeah. low. They uh, have to win this game to win this series. All right. Another one, do you think about it? Uh, I'll start with the player of the game. I think Yoki is going to have a great game, but I think AD is going to dominate. I think AD is going for a 30-25 game. I think he's going to go for it. Open like a true Lakers fan. Boy. I mean, I, I, have to, I, <laughs> I have to go with my team. And I think the bust of the game, I think it's going to be Jamal Murray. I think I was gonna go. With, <laughs> I, I was gonna go with MPJ, but I think I M- can see that happening. <laughs> I mean, I was gonna go with MPJ, but I think MPJ does not have that kind of. He's not the second leading scorer expectations. I think Jamal Murray still has the second uh, the expectation of being yeah. the best player on the Nuggets team, and I think he's not gonna have the greatest game. I think Lakers have won both game ones away from home. They've not had a home court advantage advantage at all, and even if they win the series, they still might not have it. Unless they go against the Heat. But, uh, I mean, I'm expecting for them to. So, I'll go with that. I'll go with the g- bust of the game for sure being Jamal Murray. I think the surprising player of the game, I mean, again, not surprising. I think Rui Hachimura has gotten 20 points in both game months against them, against Memphis Grizzlies and against Warriors. So, I think it's going to be not a surprising game. And I think he's going to go at least for the, at least 15 to 20 points again. And lastly, winner, I definitely think Lakers. I think Lakers, even though they do not have home court advantage, and Denver have a huge advantage with the altitude and everything. And even the home fan, I think I was surprised. I think this is the highest. A lot of people are talking that this is the best home crowd that they've seen from the Nuggets for a, from a very long time. But at the same point, I think Lakers know that this is a do or die game. I think if they, they, they know it through the two series that if they win game one, they're going to go course game two and take back that home court advantage in game three, right? So, stealing home court is really important. I think game two is not going to happen. And I think game one, they're going to go all in. And I think Lakers take this game away too. I mean, right. Uh, sorry, very well said, Angul. Yeah, I'm sorry, but... Sergeant. I just, I just have to pick something apart from his uh, analysis. Are right, you right, right. really picking the Celtics uh, to be a a worse matchup for the Lakers? I mean for a, for the Lakers, I mean you can you can see it in different ways, right? We're gonna move on to the Celtics really soon. But I just wanna say that <laughs> Celtics have a lot of perimeter shooting and I've not seen a lot no- I mean both guards have given buckets to a better DeJounte Murray who was a better perimeter defender to Dennis Schroeder, Austin Reeves, all of these players combined. So I mean I, I mean, Jalen Brown is one of my favorite players. He's probably the best small forward apart from LeBron James, who are my support. So, I mean, I support Jalen Brown. Not <laughs> like Jason Tatum, I know, at all. But we'll move on to that very soon. So, Jen, I'm sorry for getting you off. Oh, it's perfectly fine. I mean, uh, for me, the best player of the game, I'm also uh, predicting that it would be Nikola Jokic. I mean, he has been dominant throughout the season. He has been dominant for the past two seasons now, it's the third season that he's dominating. He's been dominating all playoff series. Right? He is one of the best players right now in the in, in the particular league. I mean, and I, I, and I think so that makes him the best player of the uh, of the series, right? After that, uh, for the biggest, uh, I think so, Murray will be the biggest bust of the game. I'm predicting that to happen because he's been, he's, 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 uh, I mean, he's been given too much attention in the past uh, in the recent past, and I think so, he might not live up to that expectation <laughs> that we have of him. I mean, uh, uh, that's what I particularly think. 
the most now surprising player. Now I feel like player. Murray's gonna have the craziest game. For, for sure, he's I gonna mean, go. I mean, if I say it now, that that's for sure. He's gonna whenever they bet against the players. All three of us have said like. Because I feel like all three of us have said like Murray's kind of shit, and and now I feel like he's but, he's gonna but, be like super but good you know game what's man. The funny the funny thing is that whatever we have predicted for the Nuggets has actually happened. Apart from them like sweeping the Suns, I think pretty much whatever we to- talked about the Nuggets, it did I mean, end up happening. I mean, not to like self brag or anything, but I I even predicted the Warriors Lakers series almost correctly. I think oh. like I said Lakers in six, right? Uh, I mean. As as hard of a fan as I am of the Warriors, I kind of saw this coming because of like the logic says otherwise. And like you guys, it I don't know slightly biased towards the Lakers, but I feel like the the Nuggets the Nuggets have a slightly better yeah. team. I don't I don't think they're like miles ahead. Uh, just because like the Lakers the Lakers have been playing really well. The as Lakers well. are not playing like, like the seventh seed. The team. fit is there. I think I think these two are very similar teams. Very similar teams in terms of depth. In terms of just random role players showing up everybody knowing their role like two heavy stars at the top and then the rest of the team showing up together and like i think these are very similar teams who have very good chemistry these are two good teams instead of just like individual talents and i think that's why they're here and i think either of them deserves to win the championship um so yeah i think that, that's man this is sorry srijan we cut you off again this is bad I mean, uh, I agree to it, uh, Rudras, to be very honest. I think so, Lakers, but the problem with the... I mean, I, I'm predicting that whoever wins the series would probably go on and winning the NBA championships. I don't see... Uh, I mean, that, that's a bold prediction, but I don't see uh, the Celtics or the Heat giving any competition to this matchup, I think. So, if if uh, Nuggets are able to sweep Lakers or uh, win in a com- comprehensive manner, I think so, Nick, and the Nuggets are one of the most... Uh, then uh, Nuggets are the most dominant team in the, in the only... And I don't think so. The it would be uh, Celtics going forward, but if Lakers manage to beat the humongous Nuggets team that they that that they are with the, with the kind of uh, bench production that they have, which, with the kind of level that which Jokic is playing, uh, I think so. Lakers might take it. But uh, the biggest, yeah. uh, the most surprising player of the team, I think so, would be for me would be KCP. I think so. He will Dele? come off the come off the bench. He'll uh, give you the perimeter shooting that you are expecting. I mean. Seen that the Lakers, uh, Lakers defenders are probably very, very good at the paint. I think so. They need, uh, the Nuggets would need, uh, would need the three point shooting uh, that he brings it, and uh, especially he being uh, an ex Laker uh, player. I think so. He'll be coming back with some <laughs> redemption, with redemption uh, in his mind. But what I feel is Come that on, Denver uh, fans, you need to <laughs> comment like and help me out. I, I am, I, I am outnumbered here. Like two big <laughs> Laker fanboys. <laughs> He won a chip with the Lakers. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. He has a ring. He has a ring with the Lakers, I think. So, but he'll also show that he's not just because he did not get the ring because of Lakers. He can perform well on every team, I think. So, it's a lot of he's he, he has proved a lot of things, but he also has a lot to prove. Uh, so that I think so he, he right. might go and get one and be the surprising player. But that, even that's after a good, all that's this, a good pick. Yeah. I, I mean, after all this, uh, my my lopsidedness towards that were Nuggets in the whole. Uh, uh, in the predictions, I'm still uh, want, I'm still hoping, and I'm still predicting Lakers to win Game One, because when you go into the into such a game where it's very important, I mean, it what depends upon, and what actually plays in gives in the the weight to the equation is the number of star players that you have on the team. I think so that also depends upon uh, a lot, and I think so Lakers outnumbered the Nuggets on this uh, on the star players uh, uh, given the match. I mean, if Nikola Jokic probably sure. uh, Nikola Jokic does not have a good game, the Lakers could take it easily. But even if he has, I don't think so. Murray will be uh will will be on top of his game, and I think so. Lakers might will take it uh in in game one, and I'm I'm predicting Lakers to take this whole series as well. 